activity, which is where all these little blobs are in the background, right? In DBT, like I said, it's all about balancing and opposites coexisting. So I'm sure we can all think of somebody that tends to be really emotional sometimes, right? And then we could think of people that are kind of more logical and kind of just stick to the facts and don't really talk about feelings that often. In DBT, we want to bring these things together and we don't want anybody to operate all the time in logic mind because then you're going to be a robot or all the time in emotion mind because then maybe you're feeling like a little volcano that's going to erupt, right? Intense emotions can make us, again, really difficult to think. So in DBT, we talk about something called wise mind, which again, we wanna bring both of these things together, okay? So again, reasonable mind, logic, facts, the brain. We use past experience to make des decisions and guides our behavior. Emotion mind, this is where the feeling and urges are super reactive and intense, okay? We use our emotions to decide our actions. So again, I think everybody in this room has experienced really intense anger or anxiety or to a big extent to where maybe you say something just out of instinct because your emotion's so intense. And then maybe later on we regret what we said or feel bad or guilty or shameful about that. We wanna bring both of these components together. We wanna figure out how can we use logic while at the same time acknowledging the feelings that are present and maintaining the sense of balance. We also refer to this as kind of this intuitive place. So like that gut instinct, if you've ever had a gut instinct or a feeling in the pit of your stomach, that's usually taking both of these things into consideration. So all the skills that I'm gonna talk about today really have to do with, okay, if we're stuck in emotion mind and our emotion is driving the wheel, so to speak, or driving the bus, how can we use skills to calm that emotion down in the intensity? right? So that we can start looking at logic and reason. Because a lot of the times if the motion is super intense, it's hard to think of the facts. Just kind of operating on that, that impulsive or that just that urge to just respond. Okay. So distress tolerance skills is where we're going to start. These are what I want you guys to think about to use when you're in emotion mind. When those intense, intense emotions make it difficult to think, right? When we use these skills, it's going to help us access that wise mind place that I just talked about. It's going to decrease the intensity of that emotion that you're feeling. It may not fix the problem that you're struggling with, but what's really cool about these skills is it helps it from making it worse, which I think we can all appreciate. It decreases suffering and decreases that impulsive responding, like, you know, saying things that we don't mean or, you know, avoiding things that make us scared or kind of staying in that sad sadness or the depressive waves that can come towards us. So the first skill is called the stop skill. Again, take in what you can. We love acronyms in DBT because it helps you memorize these skills, okay? So the stop skill is essentially when you're recognizing that you're in emotion mind. And I want you to really visualize a big red stop sign in your mind. And we want you to stop what you're doing. Don't move a muscle because your emotions might make you act without thinking. And we want you guys to stay in control. This requires that ability to take a step back, which is the T. Take a break, let go, take a deep breath. Do not let your feelings make you act impulsively. Okay, and this is where you're going to use some other skills that we're going to talk about in a few minutes to kind of help you regulate a little bit. The O is for observe. So again, that mindfulness that I talked about, it's noticing what's going on inside, like your emotions and your thoughts, and then also outside. What are other people thinking and doing or saying, right? What are your thoughts and feelings and what are others saying and doing? And then after you've done all of this, you can proceed mindfully to do what you think is actually going to be the most effective, right? What's going to make the situation better or worse? And essentially what the stop skill is helping you do is create space to respond in a different way, okay? We're gonna talk about three different kinds of skills today. First, we're gonna talk about tips.